Ryan Holiday, author of Growth Hacker Marketing, Trust Me I'm Lying, and The Obstacle is the Way. Um, what kind of design would you say you're in and how would you define it? Um, I wouldn't say that I'm in design exactly, right? Uh, I mean, I design my own books and I work on advertising campaigns and stuff like that, but uh, I wouldn't call myself a designer. What, what do you do then? So I'm a writer, so I write books. Um, I am a marketing consultant. I was a director of marketing for American Apparel, one of the largest garment manufacturers in the world, uh, known for their sort of provocative advertisements and social media campaigns. So I'm, what I do is related to design, and I have a great amount of respect for what designers do, but I'm not one myself. That, I wouldn't call myself one because I, I understand what they do is its own unique skill set. What do you think the role of design is in business and life in general? I mean, it has a, design has a number of roles, right? Um, on the one hand, it's it might be executing somebody else's vision. Like, I have an idea for a product. Can you please make something for me that does these things, right? Or maybe design is communicating a message to someone, right? You're designing a, a flyer, a poster, an advertisement that needs to communicate a when and a where and a why. Um, and design is also uh, about allowing people to do the things that they want or need to do. Um, how has the digital revolution uh, changed or affected your work? Well, so I'm, I guess I'm right on the edge of being a, like a net digital native. So um, I, I wouldn't say it changed my work because I don't know what came before, but it, it pervades everything that I do. Like what's, you know, like some people try to make the distinction between like marketing and digital marketing, but there really is no distinction, right? Because everything we do is communicated through the internet and through the cloud in some form or another, right? Um, I even say my first book was about uh, sort of media narratives and, and how media narratives propagate through culture. And even people who don't consume news online, whether they just watch television or read the newspaper, don't understand how much what they see and hear and read is driven by the conversation that happens online. So I would say that digital has sort of changed everything. Would you call yourself a digitalist? A digitalist? I suppose so. I, I guess I would call myself a digitalist. I, I mean, I, I, in, in, to the extent that so much of what we do is digital. Um, but I guess that calling yourself that almost in some ways makes a distinction between what is digital and what is not digital. And I would say increasingly that distinction is falling away. If you could change one thing, let's say about marketing, since mm -hmm. you're not a designer, self-proclaimed, sure. if you could change one thing about marketing, what would it be? Well, I think so many marketers sort of fancy themselves artists, right? Which is very admirable, but that's really not what their job is. Their job is to sell and grow brands or products or businesses or startups. And so they do these kind of art projects. Uh, but if you want to be an artist, go be an artist. If you're trying to if you're trying to grow a business, that's what you're being paid to do. That's what you really actually need to do. And you need to avail yourself of the tools that make that possible. And you need to hold yourself accountable uh, to those sort of standards and benchmarks. So I, think, I, I sort of say this idea of like being Don Draper from Mad Men is like a total myth and it's not your job and that's not, that's not going to be your job. How would you define growth hacking? So I sort of define growth hacking as, as a, what marketing would be if you invented it right now. Um, you know, so much of what is part of the traditional marketing toolbook from, you know, print advertising to press releases were invented around the, the turn of the last century uh, and then sort of not updated since then. And growth hacking says, well, nobody I know reads newspapers, reporters aren't checking press releases, so how do we get people to sign up for something and to do it quickly and cheaply and scalably? And growth hacking is a framework for accomplishing that. What are the benefits, or would you would you say growth hacking is a good choice for all companies? Yeah, I would say growth hacking is designed specifically to grow something from nothing to something, right? To take a startup that didn't exist and to acquire its first 1,000 users to its first million users, right? Or maybe to a billion users, whatever. The point is, growth hacking is designed to grow something quickly and uh, usually from from scratch. So, you know, if you work at a Fortune 500 company, it might be a little bit different, um, but that's still, 
I, I, th I think what you can learn from is these startups, these companies that essentially make do with none of the luxuries that traditional marketers take for granted and say, well, okay, I do have some advantages they don't have. How can I do even better than they can? Um, if someone wants to get into growth hacking, how would one do that? Well, I, I tried to write what I think is the sort of first introduction to growth hacking. Um, I call it sort of a primer on the future of marketing and public relations and advertising. Um, but there's all sorts of, and so the book's called Growth Hacker Marketing, but there's all sorts of great, what's really cool about growth hacking is, is how public and social all the people in the space are about the things that they're learning and experimenting with. I mean, honestly, just Googling the concept and checking it out will give you a huge advantage. And, and start there and, and see where it takes you. Thank you. Cool.